people come, people go, people stay, people break but to okay. People call size if I did with my baby Morisha. I was born in UK, like yeah. you rightfully said. Uh, my parents moved back to Nigeria just shortly after. And then um, I, I, I grew up all my life. I, I was raised in Nigeria. Dream I was inspired by um, my experience being born in UK. And then I wasn't given my right of abode. I go home and then I was just, I was just like, you know, the reality dawned on me really that I'm in Nigeria. What happened? Why did you decide to retire from music? I'm um, re retiring from music. I, well, I didn't retire. I guess the younger me was just blabbing. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to delve into other things. You can't break into the Nigerian music industry without um, relationships. Mm. You know, because, you know, if you see anybody even facing any issue regarding breaking in, it's because you're probably offended so. <laughs> Some, some, some people of interest, you know, or they've not met those people of interest because it's, it's, it's really just about brotherhood and, and these days it's all about cultism and it's crazy. <laughs> Everyone is a cultist. Hello and welcome to Behind the Filter. Behind the Filter is a space where we dive into the captivating stories of individuals who are navigating various struggles, triumphs and everyday realities that are not being displayed on social media. As usual, I am Okolopis Uche and I'm your host for this amazing podcast series. Today I have in the studio a Nigerian musician and songwriter who is known for his soulful voice and guitar skills. He is an OG in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome GT Dagita Man. Ooh. <laughs> How are you, peace? I'm fine, thank you. Good welcome to, you. to Behind the Filter. Thank you, thanks for having me. Yeah, how are you feeling today? Oh, I feel good, can't wait to get into the conversation. <laughs> yeah, I love that energy, yeah. I'm loving it. So you have such an interesting story, and mm. so I would want us to start from the very beginning. Okay. Yeah, so you grew up, you were born in South England, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it and tell me about growing up, your childhood and what growing up was like for you. Um, I, I, I was born in UK, like yeah. you rightfully said. Uh, my parents moved back to Nigeria just shortly after. And then um, I, I, I grew up all my life. I, I was raised in Nigeria, Lagos to be, um, to be precise, Maltu, in the heart of Maltu, <laughs> you know. And um, I mean, it was normal childhood. You know, at some point, I didn't, um, I didn't find my popsy in the house. He left when I was, you know, quite young. And um, my mom single-handedly raised uh, I and two other um, siblings, you know. And, um, yeah, childhood was, it was fun. I had to become a man early in life, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I delved into music and music was like the, you know, Music was like the Jesus for me. Oh. Music saved me. <laughs> music, me. Music sort of made everything easy for me, you know, and um, I, I kept getting favors, you know, just for the singular reason that I could, I could sing, yeah. you know, and um, I delved, I, I picked up the guitar at some point and hey, the rest they say is history. Right. <laughs> Interesting. So let's talk about your early days in music. And, you know, you said it was like Jesus for you. Yeah. So what what drew you closer to music and made you decide to pursue it professionally? Um, I think I, I was a fan of music. My dad had um, a huge collection of Ebenezer bass, Sonia Day. Um, and then we would, we would just dance in the house and just have fun. You know, but, um, later on, I discovered that I have that insane passion for music. You know, I would lock myself up in the room and I'll keep, you know, singing and writing songs. You know, I joined several groups. I could remember my first group, um, we were called... Um, Pairs of gloves. <laughs> Why we named ourselves Pairs of gloves? Pears I would of never. Love. Yeah, that's I would a very interesting name. Yeah, I wonder why though. <laughs> Looking back, it sounds very funny. And then another group I joined, Temple and Excel. You know, the groups basically um, made up of my childhood friends in Amu Odofi. You know, who had the same musical inkling too. You know, so um, yeah, and at some point I 
saw this guy playing the guitar on the streets, John Akombi, and I asked him, I said, ah, I could, I could, you know, I, I, I love to sing, you know, it would be nice if I can touch the guitar. Uh-huh. He made me touch it and, you know, somehow, somehow I started learning. I'm a self-taught guitarist, you know, and um, yeah, I met Storm 20, um, 2005. And then I got signed to Stone Records yeah. um, with Daria Talade, Jasmine Alofi, um, Sasha, um, you know, and a lot of superstars. <laughs> I was going to ask that question because you were signed to Stone Records with yeah. Need to See, Sasha Yeah, Need to See, Need to See, Ikechuku, yeah. Jenna Pai. All of those people yeah, then. Yeah, big, big guys. Yeah. Man. YQ, you know, a lot of us. So what happened? Why did you decide to retire from music? I'm um, re- retiring from music. I, well, I didn't retire. I guess the younger me was just blabbing. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to delve into other things. You know, um, 2010, I left Storm, you know, after releasing my uh, much anticipated debut album, The Truth. You know, it had singles like um, Truly, like Dreamer, When Am I Gonna Be What I Want to Be? It had um, I Don't Wanna, it had Just Fine, a lot of amazing songs, you know. Even though we didn't really promote it, but that uh, that album actually is like, um, it's a yardstick for a lot of things, you know, soul in Nigeria, mm. you know. And I think it started a movement that I think um, a lot of people followed that direction somehow at that point and even till now, you know. So um, I left Storm, I started my label, Ember Entertainment, and then, you know, music it wasn't as easy as it is back <laughs> like now. I can't imagine. Back then it was crazy. I mean, they, they were call us OG before IG <laughs> but, but the really we, it, it was it was really difficult to push music back then you know I could remember a lot of times when we will you know we'll finish performing and we'll have to wait for boss oh my <laughs> the God. next morning <laughs> You know, it was crazy time, you know. So at some point, I just I just told myself, okay, let me raise the funds. Let me delve into business. And business actually happened to be a very jealous, you know, thingy. So when I delved into business, I sort of just withdrew from music somehow, you know. And I thought I was going to come back and it, time kept passing, <laughs> you know, and, and I couldn't come back, you know. And now I'm back and I feel good. We are so happy to have you back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned Dreamer because I've also heard the song Dreamer. Yeah. It was a massive hit and actually gave you, you that recognition in the music industry. What was the impact of that song in your career for you? It was amazing. I mean, that was that was the very first song that blew me out, you know, out there and introduced me to Nigerians and Africans as a whole. Um, I, the first time I performed Dreamer, I was sprayed on stage. And that happened to be my first major show, um, Night wow. of a Thousand Laughs in Abuja, 2005. My then manager, Omo Baba, number one, you know, he just kept taking me everywhere, you know, and um, he was able to get me that performance. And I was sprayed on stage in 2005. Wow. You know, they showed it on national TV and people really just kept calling that this song is a beautiful song, you know. And um, when I got signed to Storm and I we were able to record that song with T.Y. Mix in Abuja and we shot a video for it and we released it. It was just massive. Mm. You know, the the impact was crazy because back then people were doing a lot of, you know, danceable songs. You know, GC just came with his guitar. And And I can remember back then, yeah, when I'm about to perform in the club, they'll literally just stop everything. And then GT will come with his guitar Ooh. and then I would just change the whole mood. Yeah. It, was, it was really beautiful. You know, it, it, the, the thing is we all have dreams, mm. you know, and everything starts from the spiritual before it manifests in the physical. So, you know, even the president, you know, once had a dream to become a president. A president. So it's a song that people could relate with. And and that was just it. It, it, it really it's that um it, it, it gave me that push you know uh, and that bragging right to say i'm a superstar <laughs> <laughs> lovely so you said the creative process what was the creative process like for dreamers and how did you come up with that hit song and did you think it was actually going to blow up the way it did you see the thing is when it comes to music we we really do not know what will come off 
um, whatever we record, mm. you know, how the people would accept our songs. We don't know, you yeah. know. Um, Dream, I was inspired by uh, my experience being born in UK and then I wasn't given my right of abode. I go home and then I was just, I was just like, you know, was, the reality dawned on me really that I'm a Nigerian. Mm. You know, because, <laughs> because I used to brag to my, you know, colleagues back then in school and I would say, hey, I'm leaving you guys soon. I'm going to UK. Yeah, you know, UK boy. And people used to respect me back then. Like, you came boy, don't touch you. Oh but my God. When the reality dawned on me, it was a shameful moment. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shameful moment, you know. I, I, I wrote that song I, without even thinking too deep, you know. I, was, I just kept writing, you mm. know. And, you know, that, that was just it. Yeah. Interesting. So you were nominated for the Hip Hop World Award for the next rated category yeah. in 20, 2008. Yeah. We won the call and um, who else? I'm actually the first musician to be nominated twice for next rated. Oh, you yeah. were nominated twice? Yeah. The first time it was me, Asha and um, a few other musicians. And um, the second time was me, Wande Cole and um, Banky W. I think, yes, Banky W. Um, M I. Re Emma was also in the yeah, category. It was, yeah, he was there. So what was that? How did you feel like to be nominated for the next rated category? I mean, those that are nominated for that category are like the next big thing. Mm -hmm. So how did it feel like for you and what was the impact of that nomination? I guess they were correct because, I mean, every one of us ended up, you know, chatting, you know, it, it, an amazing career for ourselves. Mm. You know, we got featured on some of the biggest collaborations. We were able to make a lot of hit songs. Back then, during that award, like, people thought it was going to be GT, you know, because I was, I was sort of bigger than every one of them. <laughs> Back you know me. <laughs> Back then, but you see, you see these guys, they are, they are everywhere now, you know, yeah. what, what they were able to do with their career, you know, I look, I look back and I'm like, wow, you know, I can remember during the um, nominees party, I told one day, I was like, one day, Omo, one day was like, GT, Omo, now you go win this, you know, and I'm like, Omo, now you, you know, we kept pushing yeah. it to ourselves. And at some point, I was just looking at Banky and I was telling him, I was like, it will be this one. This one I come from. I was like, this one come from him. From here, you want to come win car for you. You know, but it, I, I said then, you know, we didn't know what lies ahead of us. Mm, you yeah. know, Banky W ended up um, building one of the biggest record labels in uh, in Africa, you know. Yeah. Uh, MI ended up leading Chocolate City to glory. And Wande Cole ended up becoming the biggest musician in Africa. You know, so, I mean, looking back, it was it, it still remains a great privilege to be attached and associated with such great brands you know mm -hmm. and um i think um jit is coming to do his own beat also <laughs> all right okay still on back then you were going to be the next big thing you were actually everyone saw that you were going to be the next thing what do you think went wrong then I mean, I, I don't think maybe maybe promotion, maybe um, the fact that I was in a label that wasn't as you know um, enthusiastic about the kind of music that I push, and, and all this is based on maybe you mm -hmm. know um, Storm Records. It obviously, it was a hip hop label. Yeah. Oh you know, yeah. Yeah. Storm was a hip hop label pushing GT. They did their bit, you know, because we wouldn't be having this interview if they didn't do a great job too. Literally. But it could have been better. It could have, you know, they could have. Uh, we could have taken over, you know, just like this other guys did. Um, I, I think time and chance happened to every one of us. And sometimes we think that the right moment is was yesterday, but then the right moment is today. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, today is actually the right moment. And the fact that I still have the passion and energy and the drive, you know, tenacity and everything yeah. to push music now is the right moment. <laughs> now is the right moment. I mean, you're so right. You know, now everything is so much different mm -hmm. from, you know, back then. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a whole new Gen Z yeah. brand. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I feel like it's, it should be more easier to reach people. Do you feel like it is easy to reach people, more audience, like in case of promotions that you've spoken about? Do you think it is easier today to do that? Oh, well, for me right now, um, I'm really just excited about doing music you know 
for everyone that gets to listen to my music, I find them fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, for those who are not going to listen to it now, that like, that will listen to it tomorrow, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm not I'm not under any pressure whatsoever. I'm just doing my music, and um, and I'm having fun. Lovely. So what is your what are your thoughts on the new cats in the industry? <laughs> Bonner Boy, Whiskey, wow. David Do, Rema. Wow. Of, like they are doing absolutely well. I mean, yeah. Afrobeat is now like a global music. Mm -hmm. Everybody listens to it. Like what is your what are your thoughts on that? Uh you see, those guys, they were able to do the things that we couldn't do, mm. you know, back then. You know, thanks to the boom in the internet space, obviously. But hey, Bonner Boy, God, is truly the African giant. I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, there's something about him, his performance, he's a complete superstar. You know, whiskey, oh my god, that guy is drive, his his mental strength. Davido is ready to do anything to, you know, to push Afrobeat to the next level. Rema, Rema is so brave, you know. Yeah. He's so young and so brave and so, so daring, you know, and very experimental. The Try, fact that, yeah. yeah, the fact that he could, you know, blend that Indian thingy with Afrobeat. With Afrobeat. So pop. You know, these guys, you know, my, I doff my heart. <laughs> they, they, they did a great job and they're still doing a great job. The consistency for these guys also you can't you can't you can't shit on them mm -hmm. <laughs> they are just amazing they yeah. they they're, they're pushing, pushing in the yeah. work yeah big ups to them mm -hmm. awesome so reflecting on your journey mm -hmm. as an artist what have you learned about yourself and about the nigerian music industry as well what I've learned about myself is that people saw a preamble of what I could do back then, you know, and they're about to see the full glory of what mm. Jesus is about to do. I, I realize that I know what I'm doing. I realize that, you know, um, I, that, like I tend to praise myself a lot more now, you know, and be kind to myself, you know, because, you know, I've done well for myself, yeah. you know, regardless of how things might have turned out, you know, sometimes you look at it, you'll be like, okay, GT, you could have been one of the, you know, people that will be the, um, how do I put, what's the word? The pioneer. Uh, the, yeah, well, you can call me a pioneer still, yeah. <laughs> but like the force to reckon with mm, when it comes to Afrobeat Afrobe, currently, yeah. but then that is what we're building now and, you know, it's never too late. It's never too late. Yeah. I mean, you can start up. And I, that's what I like to tell people most times when you feel like, oh, time is behind you or none of that. It's like you can always choose to start up anytime. Anytime. Yes. The, right, the right time is now. Is now. Is now. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So um, you, I want to touch a bit of your family mm -hmm. and your, you know, you got married. When did uh, you get married? Uh, well, I got, I, I got married in 2016 and then I got divorced. It was in 2019? Four years, no, 2020. 2020? Yeah. Uh, COVID divorce, you call it. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me yeah. about that experience. How was it like going through that? For you, going through divorce. Going through divorce. Yeah. I, I don't wish it on anyone. You know, it's it's the craziest thing that can happen to you. You know, when you're, you've become so attached to someone and then all of a sudden you're pulling yourself, you know, away from it. It's crazy. You know, and um, divorce. You know, for a young man like me, choosing a woman as your one and only forever. It's a scary moment. Mm, <laughs> because you'll be like, oh my God, like forever? <laughs> like, till death do us pass. <laughs> you know? And then, so, so you you tend to make that decision with caution. Mm. You know, you're like, oh, man, I don't... And also the fact that I was a product of a broken... Um, well, I'm a product of a broken home. You know, and um, hey, I never wanted it for myself. Yeah. Uh, what I went through, I, I never wanted. I, I never wanted it for my kids. You know, so watching myself go through that same pattern, hey, and there was absolutely nothing I could do about it. It was it, it was a life changing experience, Can you and imagine? it did change me in so many ways. You know. Did it change your thought process about marriage? Do you see yourself remarrying? Because it was such a short marriage, right? You said 2016 to 2020. Yeah, four years. Four years. Guess what? What? 
I'm married again. <laughs> in life. I, I, I believe in love, even though it's a long distance relationship. Yeah. Oh. But, but I believe in love, you know. I if if I'm not loving, what would I be doing? I know. Love is so important. <laughs> yeah, it's important. And the fact that hey, someone to care care for you, you know, call you, advise you. Yeah. If, except it's not love. If it's love, then it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, you that's know? So, so lovely. Hey, it changed me in a lot of ways. I learned, um, I learned a lot um, from being married and being a divorcee. Mm. And I also learned that, you know, you can start all over again, which is my story, you know. You can start all over again. Yeah. And for as many people that I can tell, whatever is holding you down, you know, it's just your mind, you know. So mind. get up and, you know, do whatever you got to do. Interesting. So, you know, when you were going through your divorce, you're a public personality. I know it can be very hard to deal with like public scrutiny, people mm -hmm. watching you, your story. How was it like, you know, being in the face of everybody and going through what you were going through at that moment? Well, at that time, I, I I was out of the scene, you know. Yeah, I mean, you I can mean, people still... still know you. Yeah, of You're course. Jitsi. Yeah, I, I, I do understand that. Yeah. But it wasn't like, I mean, I could comfortably just be, create that wall around myself and not want to see anyone. You know, I had that moment for a while. You know, I didn't want to talk to anyone. I got a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I, I got a Caucasian, you know, and we, it was just a beautiful feeling, you know, pouring all that love that I got inside to this animal, yeah. you know. <laughs> dog was like receiving yeah, every yeah, one so of them. Yeah, so I was them. just feeding the dog, you yeah. know, and, you know, we're bonding, we take long walks. <laughs> you know, it was it was a moment to reflect on a lot of things, on, on some of my patterns and, you know, hey, it was difficult. Yeah. But hey, I'm glad I'm over all that phase now. Interesting. Lovely. So one last question. What, what was one thing you've learned from being married? And your divorce and everything that you would like like to hold on to. Um, that um, but that people come and go. Mm. People come, people go, people stay, people break but to okay. People call Sazi Farao. I did with my baby Morisha. Okay. <laughs> so people go, people come, you know, it's life is, you know. People will leave you, it's about picking yourself up at the end of the day. Mm. So, hey, whether they leave you or not, you got yourself. So just make sure that you are your best friend. You know, the Bible says, um, what did the Bible say? Yeah. It said, you're the one talking. <laughs> love, it, the Bible said, love your neighbor mm. as yourself. You know, meaning that you first have to love yourself, you know, before you can even love anyone. Anyone, yeah. You know, so I come first. Lovely. That's what that's what it taught me, really. I come first, you know. So if someone living my life and I'm about killing myself or thinking of crazy thoughts, that one is no longer there, you know. I'm, not, I'm like, oh, she has left. Oh, cook something nice. Oh. With. <laughs> <laughs> so you finally accepted that it, people come, people go. People come, people go. It doesn't hurt you anymore. And I also realized that, you see, um, no relationship will last forever. Yeah. Um last last debts will you know separate us mm -hmm. you know so and um when such moments come like it will come you know, what would you do I you, mean, know, you just have to you pick yourself up yeah you know yeah you have dust to keep moving dust yourself up and you know start all over again yeah interesting so what's one thing about being an artist in nigerian industry that people don't know about uh, honestly speaking, I don't know what it feels like to be an artist in Nigeria because me, I'm, I'm sort of different, mm. you know, but I can tell you that something I wish that musicians can take advantage of a lot more because music is communication. You know, it, music is a language, it's a universal language is uh, people who sing along, you know, and we, we've got this amazing power that we can use to speak to the powers that be, mm, you know, and yeah. they will listen. But musicians are not even thinking of, you know, the fans, you know, to help them put what in. Because our leaders, sometimes it looks like they're not even, <laughs> it looks like they're not there. But I know that if musicians speak, people listen. The, 
the powers that be listen um people like um uh, Idris Abdul Karim the great Idris Abdul Karim he said Nigeria jaga jaga even the president heard the song <laughs> you know so i think musicians should use their voice a lot more it's not about it's not all about the money mm. the ladies the drugs you know but you know understanding that you have you know such huge power that you can use to make a difference no speaking about having substance in your music because i i listen to yours and you always seem to try to pass a message Thank you. but these days i won't say the same about every other artist i feel like it's just about vibes and you just want to make people dance and you just want to get in that money like what would you say to artists to like the present day artists who are not using their songs to you know i, I like listening to songs that have substance like mm. you can listen to and you can take some things back but honestly these days i i don't know can you do you agree with me like these days there are not like enough substance in the lyrics of the song is just mm. dancing and vibes and you know just to make people happy ah uh, well i think um lyrics is just one aspect of music music itself doesn't even need lyrics to exist mm, yeah. <laughs> you know so um if they are focusing on dance dance is is amazing you know the fact that you can make people shake and even make thousands of people shake at once <laughs> even make a million people shake at once that's beautiful yeah <laughs> you know if if i can make a billion people just do like this just one move at yeah. once and i capture that moment and i'll consider myself a success oh really. nice so i think um dance is also part of it you know it's um, you don't have to it, ordinarily just making people forget their worries just for a second is is something mm, it's one true. of the powers that we have i guess that's yeah. what music is about yes that's what it's about yeah you know so you can you can um program the people to be able to you know um know their right to you know you can open their eyes like bob marley and fella did mm. and you can um make them dance like awilo did awilo <laughs> <laughs> look you know, whichever one you like <laughs> <laughs> you know as, yeah. as a musician it's it's your it's your um it's your call but for someone like me i rather not just let yeah. people dance you know mm -hmm. sometimes i do like on my recent projects i didn't want to pass any message at all i only wanted to just you know say hey guys i'm back I'm that back. is home <laughs> you know and that was that was like the core message yeah. and my lead single which is called flaws that basically is talking about just love me and don't see any flaw yeah don't don't even look at my flaws mm. you know just take me the way i am you know pretty much i love that thank you i love that despite the setbacks despite everything that has happened what keeps you going and what keeps motivating you to come back to music and to you know try again and start over again me Mm -hmm. I keep me going. Oh, you, you keep. Oh, I was like, mm -hmm, but like, <laughs> full stop. Period. Yeah, but I keep me going. Like, I, I'm the one. Like, I, I tell people that I, I, I mean, and it could be like geeky, but mm -hmm. I'm the spirit that possessed my body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look at it from. <laughs> I look at it from that perspective, you know. Yeah. And um, if I want to stand up, I'll stand up. If I want to say, "Hey, I'm done with this interview," I could do that, okay. <laughs> even though I can't do that. <laughs> so, like, I am totally in charge of myself, you know. And yeah, if I find myself lagging behind, I just tell myself, "What's going on? Get back up and do what you got to do," mm -hmm. because it's 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 beyond. Uh, it's beyond passion now it's it's a purpose for me to um use my voice um to liberate my people to make people more conscious and aware of what's going on around them to make people fall in love deeper <laughs> you know that's that's my calling you know and um uh, whenever i find myself deviating from it i snap back mm, mm -hmm. lovely so i understand that you you know ventured into mining a yeah. bit what came what brought about that <laughs> career switch ah what haven't i done <laughs> <laughs> what haven't i done like i i i mean it, and it, it all started from when i was a kid you know i was very inquisitive if if i find something perfectly placed 
I will scatter it and rearrange it back. Wow. You know, I there's nothing I've not unscrewed in in my in our house back then. You know, I would unscrew the radio sets, the TV sets, everything, and, and I'll put it back, it back together. Yeah. So, like I, today, I find myself doing a lot of things. You know, um, I studied economics in Lasso. Um, I trade forex. Mm. I, I I do sales a little bit. Um, <laughs> What don't I do? I did um I, I did I did poetry at some point. I did fish farming at some point. I did um I have done a lot. You've done but a you lot. See, mining, there's something about mining. Mining just sort of helped me discover myself a lot more. You know, because going into the forest to seek these precious stones and minerals. It makes me just say, man, God is great, mm -hmm. you know, so, because if, if you go into the deep of the forest and you see how blessed Nigeria is, you know, it, it just made me realize that we are living in abundance, in a world of abundance, that there's, there's nothing called scarcity, you know, like I, it got to a point that if I'm sitting in my house, everything that is inside my house I've encountered in the forest before. <laughs> like every table is a tree in yeah, the forest. Yeah. You know, every every glass is squats. You know, every tile is feldspar for me. Every POP is um is kaolin or tak. You know, every <laughs> you know so every cloth is like a plant. It's made from yeah. A plant. Every iron like this is iron ore. You know, so like it just sort of made me see things in a different light, you know, and it also helped me with my writing, you know, and it helped me find myself, you know, and I, I delved into mining and it was beautiful. I did sharp sand, I did quartz, I did feldspar. I did. That is so <laughs> I impressive. I can't even tell you, like, that is so impressive. You know, like I would sleep in the forest, like beside, <laughs> beside a stream, you know, crazy moments. And I would still go back into, into mining someday, you know, I intend to have like a big mining company, you know, and be the one to build your roads. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Be the one to, you know, like I have big dreams over there too. I love that you have so many, you know, aspects to you. Like yeah. it's not just one thing. Mm -hmm. Like that's very interesting. I that's wish I was focused on music alone though. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing with me is that, you know, I'm very inquisitive. You know, if if I see someone doing something and I find it interesting, I, I go for it, you know. Mm -hmm. You write your songs yourself. Yes, I do. But on the on the EP that I released, I I called on a few Gen Zs. Mm. Yeah. Because I didn't want to just come out there again with the same old GT. Yes. I was going to so. ask that. Yeah, like, you know, coming into this industry, it is so different. Like I said in the mm -hmm. beginning from like, you know, back then in 2008. Yeah. Now it's 2024 and mm. everything is so advanced, so forward. And yeah. people's, you know, tastes and likes, they change mm. every time. It's like, what is the strategy to stay in? relevant right now in this music industry the strategy to stay relevant is to remain myself you know um because i mean when you say relevant relevant is something that is still useful right mm. so i mean once i can remain myself you know people people want to listen to gt sing mm -hmm. you know people want to hear the truth People want um, their pain to be expressed. People want to fall in love. Mm. People want to talk about Nigeria. Yeah. You know, and these are things, these are questions, you know, bogging my mind too. You know, so, I mean, the only way to stay relevant for me is to speak the minds of the people. It's as simple as that. It's to be the mouthpiece of the people. You know, and that's such, it's such an honor. <laughs> I love that. So what would you do differently today than the last time? than last couple years ago because you were away for a decade mm -hmm. that's 10 years and uh, you see it's only gt that can go like that and come back again <laughs> <laughs> it's only gt that can do that you know because yeah. you see everything that i do i have insane passion for it and i keep talking about that you know and i, I don't think anything can be done without you um, you know being obsessed mm. you know with it you know it's it's really not about money for me 
it's not like I'm a rich guy, but it's, it's not about money for me. It's not, it's, it's just like, a, it's, it's, it's me fulfilling my purpose, you know? And as long as that's what I'm doing, I don't, there's nothing that I'm doing different. I just want to, you know, put myself out there at every opportunity that I get, you know, if there, if I see that there are people gathered, you know, there's something that I want to share with mm -hmm. them, you know, and I just share and I go my own way. It's really as simple as that. And whatever comes out of it is, is beautiful. Oh, oh, great. The Bible said, um, seek you first the kingdom of God and mm. every other thing and will be added, added onto you. Fear. So for me, the kingdom of God is making sure that I produce the best songs that I can produce uh, and I'm um, the best version of myself for me that's the kingdom of God for me you know and I believe every other thing will be added yeah. Onto you, definitely. I pray it is all added onto you in multiple folds. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> so your recent EP, LOD, you know, yeah. signifies a comeback after a Ten. whole decade. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what should DT fans expect from this EP right now? It, LOD is an experimental EP, like I've been saying. It's, yeah. It's, um, it's me just trying to show people that I can do other things. You know, people know GT, the guitar man, as, ah, that soulful guy, he's always playing mm. his guitar. If I, when he told me that I was going to play my guitar today, I said, no, Jerry, uh, I'm not going to sing. You still play well, you know, I don't mind. <laughs> but you see, there's a lot that I can do. I can raga, I can sing, I can rap, you know, but people didn't get to see all that. You know, so I felt, okay, on this EP, I'm just going to give the, um, people a different version of GT. And I, and I think we did. I didn't know you could rap as well. I can rap. Wow. <laughs> I can rap. You know, so I mean, on, on LOD EP, um, the first track is called Congratulations, which um, is like, um, I call it Ariwo. Sorry, it's called Ariwo. Well, hey, congratulations, Ariwo. It's, it's called The Joyful Noise. You know, so when a sinner is saved in the Bible, I think they say something like that. Evan rejoices when mm -hmm. a sinner, is, is that what it's called? I think so, okay, yes. So that, it was that feeling of me finding myself and snapping back and telling myself, how did I, why did I live for that long? And we all have that moment when we would deviate from what we love to do. And then some people feel, oh my God, why did I live for that long? And the courage to get back at it is just not there, you know. So uh, congratulations, or Ario, as people call it. It was just that song that I wrote when I came to the realization that I've been dulling myself, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I didn't think about it too much. I just dived back in. Yeah. And this is it. You know, the second track is um, uh, a, a song called With You. I wrote it for my wife, my significant other. <laughs> The third song is an Ama Piano song. Oh my God. Who would have thought that they would hear GT sing an Ama Piano song? Piano. And then the fourth flaws. The fifth is a love song, which is like the Gen Z kind of love song. It's called uh, Abike. <laughs> Special, actually. You know, the songs, we change the, main, the names. Special. Okay. You know, so the, the EP is an experimental EP, but just to show people the other sides of me. Watch what's coming. Okay. <laughs> So you just recently released a video for Flaws. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the creative process behind Flaws? Okay. So um, Flaws, when I wrote Flaws, I, I wanted to write a song that would depict how I see love. You know, people these days, when they say they love their partner, they're only looking at, they are looking out for themselves in their partners, you know? So someone says, oh, I love you, but then they want you to change into mm. something else. You know, if you want me to change, why not go look for the person that has already changed and then stay with them? You no, know, not me. Why should anyone try to change, you know, the other, you know? So Flaws basically says, overlook my flaws, accept me the way I am. It's, it's a song preaching acceptance, you know, and, um, when we wanted to shoot the video, I approached um, the director of Lonokwe, the great Avalon mm. <laughs> You know, I, I approached him and I was like, Avalon, you know, I want us to do this. And he was excited, same as I was, you know, and then he came up with the script. I read it and I said, I trust every of your judgment, <laughs> you know, and, you know, the video came out beautiful. Wow. 
Interesting. Honestly, I really admire your courage mm-hmm. to put Thank yourself you. out there mm. once again because I know it cannot be easy. Mm. Can you talk about the emotional and mental struggle that comes with being an artist that most people don't usually see? Because, you know, when you see an artist, you see the glam, the whole feet, they're always looking so... But, like, I know artists are the ones that are more sensitive and they go through a lot. Like, mm. tell me about that side of being mm. an artist. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you can be very unsure. And um, there's something we musicians do, and it's funny. A lot of people are saying, oh, I love you. You're so amazing. But you see that one person that abuses us? <laughs> That's what we'll go after. And one of my, I mean, one amazing musician, just, uh, you know, just buttress that point, Chike. Um, he had... I mean, Chike is someone who we all love. Mm. And someone abused him online and they gave the person one million there. You know, so it's 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 also like part of it, you know. Um, as a musician, the struggle to even come up with that one song that you hope... And, and all of us wants to blow. Yeah. You see, the, the, the moment you take it out of the equation, there's this calm... That now comes, you know, because really we are supposed to be having fun, not all this competition, mm-hmm. you know. You go for um and you see the awards. Like, why do we pitch musicians against each, each other? other? You know, I keep saying it, like most musicians, they never, you know, they never get to recover from the, you know, the feeling of not good in, not being good, good enough, enough yeah. you know they never get to recover from it you know when they lose these awards when you compare my craft to another person's craft you know there's a lot is it the um the payola aspect of it when you know that music is like a celebrity on the shelf somehow you can buy it you know and at some point something happened that most people don't really talk about you see, when that internet boom came and it relegated a lot of musicians to the background and some young <laughs> blood just were injected into the music industry, mm-hmm. a lot of us got confused. You know, we, we were just thrown into that uh, world of... It, it was like Alice in Wonderland because <laughs> it, was like, it was like being put in, the, um, in a pilot's uh, cabin, you know? You don't know which With button no to press again, you know? Yeah. And everything just all of a sudden became... Um, social media and then uh, the people who can stay online longer are the ones who are blowing <laughs> you know I was fighting with my partner just a few weeks back or days back actually and she was like maybe you don't go online you don't go on TikTok you're supposed to be spending every minute on TikTok but I'm like I'm supposed to be spending every minute breathing my guitar <laughs> Well, you see, the realities of being a musician in 2024 is crazy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, that's the thing. Like, you know, it's, it's technology era. Everybody's on their phones right now. Yeah. TikTok, you know, Instagram. Like these days, I feel like people don't even really go to maybe Apple Music to listen to music. If you find it on TikTok, mm-hmm. just know that your music is blown. So that's why I understand when people say, oh, go on live, do this, do that. Like, how has it been? Because I know you're not very used to social media, but you have I'm to. Not. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be present there. Like, I'm trying. It must have been hard. How do you do it? I don't even know. I'm going to see, you see the aspect of it? In fact, I, I, told, I told my friends that I'm going to start going live this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's already Thursday. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but the struggle is such it's, it's so crazy you know yeah. like I think we're also so attached to our phones mm, you know it's and a it's a mental thing mm. you know like the notifications are crazy you know they are programming us for you know and still you have to do that to be successful you know it's it's a struggle yeah 
I can imagine. Because for me, I just want to perform. I just want to play my guitar and sing. And then all of a sudden now it's about uh, double tap, double tap. <laughs> <laughs> double. <laughs> double tap. Find my, my oh something my gone. What's that gone thing they talk about? And so, and they, 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 they will say if they give you lion on TikTok. Yeah, like, like all of those gifting on TikTok. Because you have to interact with your fans. People like it when celebrities kind of like bring themselves down. You know, back then celebrities were like... You can't touch them. You can't reach them. But right now, it's like you're accessible. And they want to keep being accessi- accessible to you. Do you understand? I think that's the mentality behind social media being the order of the day right now. Okay. But speaking I, of... I, I, I wonder what's coming next. You know, that's... Yeah. That's, that's, you know, like 10 years from now, I feel like things will probably be different. Are you saying 10? Five, just give me five. <laughs> give me five. And, and I wonder what the world did, you know? Yeah. But I mean, interesting times are here. Interesting times. I, I think the the how to deal with it is just, you know, going with the flow. Wherever the life comes, wherever this generation brings you, kind of like adjust and follow. True. I guess. Yeah. So being an artist can be, I know it's everybody the public has this like expectation from you yeah it's like relating to your lifestyle how you live how you dress Mm. kind of car you drive like what is that like a pressure for you i mean if if you've been following my career and I, i i don't put myself under any pressure you know in fact, up until like not too long ago, I, I used to be the worst dresser. <laughs> <laughs> I just I mean, put it any good. In fact, at some point, I used to I used to praise myself like because I mean if I'm going out, I'll just be like, oh, what's where is it? You know, and I thought that was fun. But now I try, I try as much as possible to put a little bit of effort, even though I'm not the fashionist I still, mm. you know, but at least I'm a bit con- conscious of that. Yeah. But I don't put myself under any pressure. What you see is what you get. If you don't like me, go. If you like me, welcome. I, I think there are 8 billion people in the world and um, even your biggest musicians don't have 100 million followers yet. So, True. you know, the uncharted territories, uh, you know. <laughs> because, you know, people expect you to have like, like this flashy life, bling, bling, diamonds, everything. Like, I know sometimes for like normal people just watching, like using your phone and going on Instagram or any social media app and you're seeing people that are living this, they have this very flashy lifestyle. You, I feel like there's this kind of like pressure that comes to them. Like, oh, I want to be like that. You've never experienced that as an artist trying to be like, you know, Bonner boy, you know, if he goes out, he has this style about him, the flashy Lamborghini that he has. That lifestyle, people kind of expect it from celebrities and artists. Like it doesn't, what is your thoughts on that on all of that i just told you about me going into the deep of the forest and and realizing (laughs) that everything everything that i see in the city you know i've encountered them in the forest before you know so what can anyone put on you would okay you are putting on gold i've i have have gold sites that i've worked on you know so you have you have (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if you get it. So if you're putting on gold and you're like, like oh, the and, they're, and they're testing, and I'll be like, and I'm thinking of the site I was on, and they were like, oh my god, <laughs> you know. So I, I don't. Everything is vanity, honestly. I love the good things of life, you know. Like to an extent, I also try to put on as much as I can, mm. but it's not the pressure. I can I can wear my singlet and go anywhere I want if I want to, you know. So, um, hey, I'm not that type who, that would be pressured to do anything. Even look at me back then, the younger me, they were doing uh, Afrobeat and all that. And I would just be my guitar yeah, and yeah, do yeah. my thing. And for a long time, I never got to the point where I wanted to do what they were doing. I'm not that type of person. I know myself. I, I identify my voice within myself, you know, and I know what my purpose is. I don't, I don't want to be like anyone. Mm-hmm. I love Bona Boy. Oh my God. I love his songs. I love his performance. Yeah. I love his charisma, but I love GT more. 
<laughs> that is actually really nice. I feel like self love is so important right now mm-hmm. in today's world. Mm-hmm. You need to learn how to really love yourself first. If you don't love yourself, I don't know. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> so looking back, is there like an experience that you feel like was pivotal in shaping who you are today? Mm, I think um, attending Mayflower Secondary School um, was definitely one. My secondary school, um, Tai Shilari, having Tai Shilari as a mentor, you know, uh, yeah, that's one pivotal point, you know, because you see, if I never got all the other experience that I got, I would have been fine. You know, because style learning impacted so much in our lives. You know, <laughs> I mean, there's this quest of knowledge that I have now. I mean, it it was obviously as a result of passing through Mayflower. You know, because they would say knowledge is light and, and ignorance is darkness. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's this thing we used to do in Mayflower Secondary School. Um, it's called um, self reliance self-reliance program will go in they would tell us to go inside um, the forest in the deep of the forest and then we'll have to fend for ourselves for like um, 24 hours and this was in secondary school this was in secondary school i think we do it once in every four years and then we all look forward to that moment you know and it was a it was an amazing you know experience you know so mayflower taught me everything because i didn't really have a father figure you know growing up but hey i learned almost everything, the foundational aspect of life from, you know, just attending um, a school like Mayflower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like not having a father figure in your life kind of like, how did you think it kind of affected who you are today? Uh, Well, I mean, I made a lot of mistakes in the sense that I, I, Maybe it's not a mistake. I listen to myself more than I listen to other people. Mm. And the question is, why should I listen to anyone? Even if I have to listen to you, I have to tell myself to listen to you, right? <laughs> so a lot of people think I'm stubborn. You know, it's 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 a general thing. People say I argue a lot because I have my own opinion. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's better to have, have your own, own opinion. Yeah. You know, so I'd rather have my opinion than, you know... Be... Listen to another person's... No, it's good to listen to other people. Don't get it wrong. Mm-hmm. But people just want to feed you. They, they want you to do... Exactly. Exactly what... Yeah. You know. So, hey, um, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to talk about your education a bit because we're almost rounding up. Okay. Yeah. What was, you know, you mentioned your secondary school. I didn't know that you could actually even do that in secondary school. What did you study in university? Um, economics. Economics? Yeah. yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't peg you for that business. <laughs> you should. <laughs> what am I saying? I mean, you've done businesses and everything. So, mm-hmm. yeah, like, that's very interesting. I studied economics and then I, uh, along the line, I still got the CCNA um, and I got the Cybersecurity Plus certification Ooh, too. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. What would you say to people out there who feel like education has come? Uh, education, it depends on what you're educating yourself on. Mm. I think self-education is the most important thing. I'm an observer also, you know. I I can sit there, I can sit at one place all day just, you know, observing from the tiniest thing, from the quantum level of things to the cosmic, uh, you know, level of things. Yeah. You know? So, like, uh, this world is a wonder, you know, and I keep... Um, it, it keeps mesmerizing me every day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I wake up in the morning, I see the sun and I'm, I'm just grateful for it. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't bother myself over flimsy things. Mm. When the sun is there, the moon is there, the, you know, the, the nature, you know, nature itself just blows my mind. Do you believe, are you one of those people that believe in the universe? That yeah. the universe, you know, like, oh, if you have something, you know, the universe is aligning in my, you're one of those people. Uh, my spiritual, I'm a very spiritual person. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not a Christian anymore. Oh. Uh, yeah. Tell me about that. Why? Uh, it's not like I am not a Christian. I just don't like being called a Christian. You know, I don't have to be called a Christian before I act like Christ. Mm. You know, even Jesus is not a Christian. 
you know, even Moses, um, name them. None of them are Christians. Really. Because, you know, I notice that you quote the Bible a lot. So yeah. hearing you say you are not, because I'm just like, wait, what? No, I mean, Christi- Christianity is, is, is like an association yes. of people who say that they are acting like Christ mm. or whatever. You know, they don't act like Christ anyway. But I mean, but not to judge them. I mean, I'm just trying to act like Christ, you know. Yeah. And, and what, what I learned from Christ is really nothing more than um, that I am a God, you know. And that um, that I should act, you know, knock, ask, seek. You know, if there's something I want, you know, seek it, seek knowledge. I do yeah. that. Ask, you know, for help when you need help, you know, and knock on those doors that you think, you know. Because, I mean, that's why the door is not a wall, yeah? <laughs> I mean, it's to open it. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I, I, and the reason why Jesus Christ was speaking so much back then about these things is because people don't act. You know, if you look at it, he said, ask and it shall be given unto you, seek and it shall find, knock and it shall be It's based on action. Yeah. You know, it's because people don't act. And even till today, people don't act, you know. And um, I also feel that, um, when Jesus was asked that how do we pray, he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It means we've been praying to God directly even before Jesus Christ died. Yeah. You know, so um I don't believe that anyone is God. I only believe in, you know, that I am a God and God lives inside of me. And pretty much that's it. I love that. I love that you have your own opinion. I like Thank you. how you think, your mindset on things. So you know, what advice would you give to upcoming artists who are looking to break into the Nigerian music industry right now? Uh, believe in yourself. Um, you can't break into the Nigerian music industry without um, relationships. Mm. You know, because, you know, if you see anybody even facing any issue regarding breaking in, it's because they're probably offended so. <laughs> Some 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 people of interest, you know, or they've not met those people of interest because it's 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 really just about brotherhood and and these days it's all about cultism. And it's crazy. <laughs> Everyone is a cultist. Are it's, you serious? So, sometimes I look at it like, why don't they call me self? All these cultist people. Wait for real artists. I mean, you see it everywhere, right? Like mm-hmm. they are all flashing. Culture signs and symbols, you know, and, and I don't have a problem with it. It's their thing, you know, and as every association is good. Mm-hmm. I hope to form my own cult someday to maybe oh GT, GT people. <laughs> GT and the gang. GT and the gang, you know. So, I mean, um, yeah. I think it's all about relationship, you know, and pretty much um, believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody will. And, um, yeah, it's you that matter. It's you that matter. Yeah. Like, I like that you're always about self-love. Absolutely. You, 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 you. That's where it is. <laughs> even, even flaw says, love me, love me, love, love me. I mean, like I never me, see me, any, me. any flaw. You know, it's about, it's yeah. about me. Yeah. yeah. I can't love any other person if I don't first love myself, you know, I don't think it's possible. I I first have to love myself because it's from the knowledge of loving myself. That's how I'll be able to treat someone else fair also. Mm. So, hey. I love that. So what's, what are your thoughts on the future of the music industry here in Nigeria? Because we're already doing well. So what mm. do you think would happen in the next five years? Uh, whatever happens is fine. You know, we'll evolve, I believe. Um I I don't worry about the future. Mm. For all I care, we might not even be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> True. You know, but hey, I, I don't worry about the future. I'm only concerned about now. And if you look at mental health in itself, it's people living the now and either focusing on yesterday or thinking tomorrow. of tomorrow yeah. and anxiety is a product of focusing on tomorrow and depression is mm. f- uh, is focusing From on yesterday, yesterday. You know, PTSD is focusing <laughs> on yesterday yeah. you know, so bringing all that attention into this space and understanding that there's a book um, on the table, Givenchy Paris, and there's a cup. <laughs> and th- these are the most important things yeah. right now. There's a microphone in front of me and I'm speaking to a beautiful lady <laughs> called Peace. You know, yeah. th- this this is what matters right now. I shouldn't be thinking of what will happen if I leave here or what am I going to eat? What am I going to be traffic I'm on totally, the road? I'm totally here right now for this moment. <laughs> I so love I'm, that. I'm, I'm in the same vein, it's the same way I treat life, you know. Whatever happens tomorrow, you know, we'll weather the storm. 
I love that. I really like how you think. It's so nice. So what's next for GC right now? It's greatness. You know, I decided to be to come back into the music industry. And um, I mean, a lot of people are shocked. You know, my videos are pl now playing on trays. Yeah, we've been Niger. seeing it. My videos are playing <laughs> on MTV, Sound City, and I'm excited, you know. A lot of people, are, they're like, mm, you see, you came back. I mean, yes, I did. I came back. <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do about I that? Mean... <laughs> <laughs> I love your confidence. I love how, you know, you're so jovial and your mindset, you think of things differently. It's mm. very... I'm just like we all should, you know? Yeah. I mean, people. I feel like the problem these days is that a lot of people kind of like have like very... I don't know. They don't like to think outside of what they already know. No, they've been programmed not to. I think that's a problem we face right now. Like we need to be able to broaden our mentality, our thinking and mm -hmm. mindsets, mm -hmm. basically. And I like that you did that. Do you think it's your time away that made you grow into the person that you are today? Like your mindset. Have you always been like this? So I was telling someone something um, a few days back. I think I had a podcast interview. Too. I've, I've been doing a lot of podcasts. <laughs> Because I, I like to talk also. Yeah. You know, so I, I mean, I, and he, I think he asked the same question. And I'm like, could the, could the apple seed have known that it was going to be an apple be, when it was planted? No, no. I mean, he didn't know. Yeah. I think sometimes we feel that we are in charge. But, you know, the self already knew, you know, from even the beginning, you know, what you wanted to do with your life, you know. So... I think we are evolving into whatever version that pleases the almighty, mm. you know. And for me, I just want to keep radiating positive energy everywhere I go. You know, for GT, I want, I want to keep doing the best for GT, um, being consistent with my craft and keep releasing songs for my fans, you know. And pretty much that's what I'm focused on. I love that. Honestly, it's it's been so amazing having you here. I love that you were able to open up and share your story with us. Thank it's you. been really nice. I hope you had fun. I did. It's been very peaceful. <laughs> I, know, right? I mean, my name is Peace. Yeah. Yes. Before you go, I would like us to, you know, I'd like you to, you know, give us a little bit of that guitar. Okay, I should. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Okay, um, this one is called, um, this one is called Blessings or Ario. Oh, <clears> nice. <throat> um, okay. I tell you why you gave me music, you know it's my calling. With this melody, my rally, my calling. Why you burn, see for money? I believe, more live for. I will congratulation. I will congratulation, yo. How do you oh oh yeah oh how do you a congratulation no that's just follow me go Niwa lane everywhere we go now blessings follow me go plenty mula nikawa kachi your blessings follow me go go back it you know how to think go blessings follow me go <laughs> they go as is while of it go peace 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 and as is while of it go <laughs> bless is while of it go yeah, 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 yeah. Blessings follow me, go. They were lay everywhere we go now. Blessings follow me, go. Plenty, mula, nico, I got you, Joe. Blessings follow me, go. Blessings follow me, go. <laughs> oh my god, I feel like I just got like. <laughs> special performance oh my god that was so lovely thank you you have such an amazing voice thank you <laughs> oh wow 
<laughs> like you got me dancing in my scene and all of that, I'm smiling. Like I was like, <laughs> I'm glad you did. That's how it was, by the way. I mean, yeah. the song I told you when I woke up, I I wrote. I woke up from my slumber and then I picked up my guitar and I started singing it. You I know, love blessings, it. and it's been blessings all the way. You know. Since I decided to get back into the music industry, it's been blessings all the way. <laughs> Honestly, that is so amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming here and sharing your story, your talent. Mm. You know, it's been really, really insightful. Thank I had you. so much fun talking to you. And wow, Thank blessings you. for all of me, go. <laughs> go. <laughs> I really thank love you, that. I really lo- I'm literally just smiling and my tits is like out there. Mm. <laughs> thank you so much, GC. I mean, it's such a pleasure having, you know, the OG in the game <laughs> at Behind the Filter. <laughs> behind the Filter, guys. Yes. Behind, behind the field, behind the shades, you know. <laughs> <laughs> behind everything. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Honestly, it's been amazing. Thank, thank you so much, GT. Thank you. You're welcome, peace. You're welcome. Did you say you're welcome too? Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, this is it for this episode. I hope you had fun watching. We had GT, the guitar man, in the studio and he shared his life experiences, his new EP. And make sure you go out and check it. Do you want to say something to, you know, people to tell them to check out your new EP? Yeah, I mean, um, yes, you sure, your boy GT, the guitar man, and um, I'm back. Yeah, I certified I'm back. I'm being played on every TV station that matter right now. So I'm back. (laughs) So, I mean, go check out um, all my projects. Follow me on social media, G-T-D-A-G-U-I-T-A-R-M-A-N, G-T, the guitar man, on Twitter, on um, Instagram, on TikTok. I'm still trying to find my way around this social media thing. (laughs) But, hey, I mean, let's let's connect, let's engage. Um, The EP is out. It's a five-tracker EP. First um, in, like... Um, about 10 years um, go cop that too and I just dropped my first video in 10 years also for flaws you know I'm just excited I'm, I'm, I'm taking these steps and you know it's leading somewhere thank you guys I love you <laughs> There you have it, guys. So make sure you check out that EP and the music video flows that is playing on every channel that matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for sticking with us. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you on the next one. Bye. Mm-hmm.